Hey guys, welcome back to another Back in the Day Friday with Old Man Nevit. I'm Lauren, and let's get straight into Back in the Day mailbag. All right. This is from Allison in seventh grade. Dear Back in the Day Friday, my great aunt makes this awful cranberry sauce every Thanksgiving. It tastes like sauteed garbage, but she gets her feelings hurt if I don't eat it all. Please help me. All right, Allison. Well, I understand your predicament. This is always a dicey situation with relatives making things they don't always taste great. And cranberry sauce, hey, it's a traditional, traditional uh, holiday meal, but not everybody likes it. It can be a little bit bitter. So what you're going to do here is you're going to get the cranberry sauce just like you normally would. And as you're eating, talking to your great auntie, uh, you'll take just a little bit. Just a little bit, put it in your mouth, and then you pull the old napkin move. Um, take a little bit out right there. And so you're making conversation. Then you can move on to the rest of the stuff you like. The turkey, the dressing, what, whatever. Now, when your great aunt, when the old battle axe is uh, looking around talking to somebody else, now you're going to take some of your sweet potatoes. You're going to cover it up I and mean, you're going to bury that cranberry sauce under the sweet potatoes. Now, I know, hey, I've just, I've just ruined some good sweet potatoes, but you can still eat off the top and then go back for seconds, cover it up again. And, uh, and you'll be in good shape, and great aunt won't be, uh, won't be upset. The old bat will be happy, and everything will be good. So, what do we have next? All right. Um, this one is from Warren Hawkins. Dear old man Nevitt, how did y'all do basketball back in the day? All right. Well, you know, everybody loves basketball. It's been long, around for a long time, ever since James Mason Smith invented it. Um, but you're right, Warren. It was a little bit different back in the day. First of all, you had to wear the short shorts, the uh, high socks, the headbands. It was a different look back in the day. And if you weren't comfortable with that, you're not going to be playing ball. Um, and then if you're, say, Kurt Rambis or uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you got to wear the funny-looking goggles also. Now, uh, the game was played a little bit differently, too. Um, there was no shot clock. There was no three-point line. So we had to play the game with more finesse and style. We used things like the finger roll and the set shot. Uh, Lauren, you ever play any basketball? Yeah. 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 Did you make the team this year? Yeah. Congratulations, Lauren. How's your set shot? Uh, pretty pretty you, good. You know what a set shot is? Nope. <laughs> right. So the set shot, you know the jump shot. Everybody knows the jump shot. Well, back in the day, they used the set shot, too. Now you just use that at the free throw line where you don't jump. But back then, you know, the, the free throw, that's an accurate shot. Back then, they would use the set shot all over the place. Set up, no jump, accurate. You know, everybody could shoot back then. You didn't have to be just the one guy on the team, that you know, the Stephen Curry, uh, that could shoot. <laughs> everybody, uh, everybody could shoot back in the day. And we played the game below the rim back in the day. So, you know, we couldn't jump the way guys do now. We weren't as tall. My grandfather played basketball at Texas Tech back in the 1930s. He was six foot two. He was a post player, one of the biggest guys on the team. And the, uh, the games were played a little bit differently. He said that after every made basket, there was, a, uh, there was a center tip. So every time you make the basket, go back to center court, have a tip off again. It would seem like you had a lot of tip offs that way, but they didn't score that many points back then. The game was played more slowly. And then if you get up like, uh, say, 18 to 12, you got a six point lead. Now you just go to the four corners offense where you just pass the ball around the four corners of the of the court and just run the clock out. There's no shot clock. They can't stop you. You just pass the ball around for 15 minutes or so. Game over. They can't come foul you because of intentional fouling, it's illegal. And back then, when you fouled somebody, and they really did call it, really was illegal. Um, now, when there's fouls in basketball, you know, two guys run into each other, they fall down, the referee looks and says, well, which guy is less famous? Fouls on him. But back in the day, they really enforced the discipline. They really enforced the fouls. All right, Old Man Nevitt, what's our next Back in the Day artifact today? All right, real excited about what we have today. Is that a magic wand? Crucio! That's an unforgivable curse. Well, good thing it's not a, good thing it's not a magic wand, is it? No, oh. not a magic wand. Not a magic wand. Take another shot. Um, it looks like a ruler to me. A ruler? <laughs> when was the last time you used a ruler, Lala? Oh, <laughs> oh yesterday. Yesterday, in math class probably, yeah. right? Yeah, not a ruler. No, that's not a back-in-the-day item because that's something that everybody still uses every day. This is a slide rule. A slide rule. So, you ever heard of a slide rule? No. No, this is something that, that's uh, been forgotten pretty quickly, was real prominent until not too long ago, and has quickly been forgotten. 
So, the slide rule was invented around 400 years ago by a guy named William Outred. It uh, is based on out, uh, <coughs> logarithms. So, it's based on John Napier's uh, discovery of logarithms. It's actually a calculator. Um, so, you use the slide rule to do, you do multiplication, division. You can also do more complex, uh, more complex calculations. Um, we look at the, the side here, it's got uh, sine, cosine, tangent, trigonometry type things. Uh, we can do square roots, we can do proportions, all kinds of things. So, back in the day, we didn't have calculators. You want to know what, uh, what complicated math is. You can either do it in your head, which takes a long time, right? Even if you're smart, it takes some time, or you use the slide rule. Quick, what's 2.5 times 16? Oh, I got you. No, no, you don't have a, you don't have any technology. You don't have a calculator. Quick, what's 2.5 times 16? Um, uh, okay, hold on. It's 40. The answer is 40. So, the slide rule, they say that back in the day, you're sitting in a math class, it's test day, now you hear the sound of the pencil. Back then, you would hear the sound of the slide rules as everybody's quietly working out their, uh, working out their math problems. So, really an incredible invention. Um, NASA scientists used this when they're planning the Apollo 11 mission. This sent us to outer space. Buzz Aldrin, as the Apollo 11 astronauts are on the way to land on the moon, Buzz Aldrin is actually in the rocket using a slide rule to make last minute calculations to land on the moon safely. So a really incredible tool that you can do incredible things with. By 1972, the uh, Hewlett Packard invents the pocket calculator and the slide rule disappeared um, immediately. It was out of business, it was gone for the slide rule companies. Um, but before that, for literally hundreds of years, the slide rule um, took you anywhere you wanted to go, even took Buzz Aldrin to the moon. Wow, interesting. Um, that's it for back in the day Friday. Uh, send us a letter. That's right, send us your letters into back in the day Friday and join us next Friday. Find us on YouTube next Friday for a special holiday edition of Back in the Day Friday. And until then, we'll see you next time. Back in the day. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go way on the way back when. I didn't need to know you, you couldn't have been too much more than